today. Question 11 on the November 2013 paper is about the photoelectric effect. In the simplified diagram below, light is incident on the emitter of a photo shell, uh, cell. The emitted photoelectrons move towards the collector and the emitter registers a reading. So we have light falling on the metal, electrons is released. So what is this phenomenon called? And of course then, the photoelectric effect. Next question. The work function of the metal used as the emitter is 8 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joule and the incident light has a wavelength of 200 nanometers. Calculate the maximum speed at which an electron can be emitted. So let us quickly go to our information sheet. Here is now the formulas that we'll be looking at. E is work function plus kinetic energy. The speed of the electron is in there. This E, of course, is the energy of your light that falls into or onto your metal. But we don't have the energy as such. So we need to either change the frequency into energy or the wavelength. So we will also be needing that equation. Let's write down what we have now. First of all, we've got our work function, 8 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joule. We have wavelength of 200 nanometers. We need to change it into meters, nano to the power of minus 9. <clears throat> then we also are looking for the velocity. Now the velocity is in the equation EK is half mv square. So we need to think about mass. And then if we look at that other formula, E is hc over lambda. There is also two um, symbols that we need to give a value. So what is important is you must know H is Planck's constant and C is the speed of an electromagnetic wave. They are both constants. And this mass, if we read our question, we will see that they are referring to the speed of the electron. So we will actually need the mass of the electron. Now, all these values are given to us on the information sheet, but in our table of constants. So there we have got C, we have the value, we have H, and we also have the mass of the electron. And we'll be using those values in our equation. So we will start with E is work function plus kinetic energy. This value we will use HC over lambda to calculate the energy that my light have we have the work function and the kinetic energy is half in v square and now we can just substitute everything we have 34 then that constant 3 times 10 to the power of 8 we have our wavelength plus half of the mass, 9,11 times 10 to the power of minus 31 times v squared. And now again, let's just look at calculating v squared. We have a plus there. So you will calculate this part, subtract 8 times 10 to the power of minus 19, this is my term, and then divide everything with half of the mass. And of course, also the square root of that answer. So V If you get the answer, 6, 5, 3, 4, 5, 4, whatever, 
just change it into scientific and again have your answer rounded to the second decimal. Right, next question. Incident light of a higher frequency is now used. Now this is important, the frequency is increased and they want to know how will this change the maximum kinetic energy. So again we're going to look at our formula. The kinetic energy, how will that be changed? Now if we look at this incident light, that refers to the energy that is given to the metal, so we have HF. Now this is going to increase. Your work function will not increase because the metal remains the same. So part of that energy that is given to it, some of it will be used to release the electrons. The rest of it all changes into kinetic energy. So if this work function remains the same, but I increase the energy given, it also means that we will have an increase in the kinetic energy. We don't need to explain it, you just need to figure it out. We only have one mark for increasing. The next question then is on the intensity. Now intensity is that brightness with which the light shines and how will that affect the speed of the electron? Now this is important to remember that intensity can only change how many electrons are released per time. So it will not change the kinetic energy. Remain the same is my answer. And then the reason will be intensity only changes the number of electrons released. Only that. Right, now a little bit of a um, next question. A metal worker passes two iron rods, A and B, in a furnace. After a while, he observes that A glows deep red while B glows orange. The question now asks, which one of the rods, A or B, radiates more energy? Now again, we are back to more energy. That is the higher frequency that we need to look at. So. The question is, which one of red or orange has the higher frequency? Now we all know it's red, orange and so on until we get to violet. Now the red, is on violet is closer to your ultraviolet, which is your higher frequency side of your electromagnetic spectrum. Then this will be the lower frequency side of your spectrum and then that means that red is on the lower side and orange is on the higher side and if the frequency of orange is higher then it means it will give off more energy. So our answer will be orange, that's how you need to answer it and then the reason will be orange have a higher frequency than red. Then the last question asks us, neon signs eliminates many uh, building what type of spectrum is produced by neon signs? And there we only have emission, line emission, and you've, you've got your absorption spectrum, but we know that neon is line 